Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure coming to you from Waikiki Beach. I'm looking out my window right now. Beautiful uh, monohull sailboat. Uh, the jib and the mainsail are, are flying and uh, the sun is rising on her and just a brilliant, beautiful day here in Waikiki Beach. We're right next to St. Augustine's Catholic Church. Uh, actually, we're right above where the altar is uh, in our condo here. So we're looking forward to a great conversation today with our friend Terry Modica and her book, The Father's Heart, Meet the Real Abba Father. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Uh, you know, we, Cindy and I spent some time, uh, two or three months a year, sailing in the Caribbean on our boat, Spirit of Adventure. She's a beautiful boat, 48-foot Beneteau uh, sloop, uh, monohull. Uh, and uh, Beneteau is actually, is French for the Latin word Benedictus. It means blessing. And we love our boat to be a blessing. We invite people to come on it from time to time for spiritual retreats. Uh, but one of the things we know is about, and then we live our, and then we live our life out here in Hawaii. This is where we get to do all of our surfing here in Hawaii. But uh, one of the things we know about sailing is there's a saying: if you think you should reef your sail, reef your sail. What reefing is is when you're out sailing, sometimes your things are just beautiful. It could be a beautiful day, but then you'll see a kind of an ominous-looking cloud in the distance coming your way. And uh, that's going to bring a rain squall. And a rain squall is always comes first with heavy, heavy wind, then heavy, heavy rain, and then just total stillness after it passes. So there's a saying, if you think you should reef your sail, if you're wondering if you should reef your sail, reef your sail. So I'm saying to, specifically to the men out there, but to the, to the husbands and wives out there, the mothers and fathers, in this day and age, with, with what's going on in, in the world today, uh, with the social media, with what's going on in our public schools, and even some of our Catholic schools, uh, you need to be, you, it's, if you're wondering if you should reef the sails, if you're wondering if you need to bring a little bit more guidance and protection to your children, reef the sail. I, I, I'm t saying this because I know for some of you, you're wondering, should we be uh, sending our children to a private school, to a Catholic school? Should we be homeschooling? Uh, what should we be doing uh, if we feel our children are being subjected to uh, strange, uh, strange things in our public schools? Uh, what about uh, how much access they have uh, to social media, uh, who their friends are, who they're hanging out with? I don't mean to be overly protective of them, but it's, there's, there is a storm coming. We can see dark clouds on the horizon. It's like the, it's, uh, there's, there's more and more authors. Um, uh, Archbishop Chaput run, wrote a book about... Uh, living in a post-Christian uh, era. Uh, we're in that time now where Christians uh, swim upstream, where we're, we're counterculture, and uh, we need to be able to, uh, we need to, uh, when, the, when the storm is coming, we need to be able to protect our children. So I'm just thinking maybe you, you parents out there could have a conversation about that. And by all means, get on the school board, run for city council, get on the church council, teach our CIA classes. We have our guest today, Terry Modica, who uh, I believe, uh, I know, Terry, are you still uh, adult education director? But I know you had that in your in your history. Yeah, uh, no, I haven't been that for several years. But yeah, I was our CIA director, evangelization coordinator, and adult education coordinator, so, baptismal prep, marriage prep. Didn't you love it when you had people volunteer to help? Oh, yeah. yeah. And... <laughs> And a lot of times the best help came from me just going to parish events like dinners and picnics and sitting next to somebody and, and listening to their story. And then I'd say, hey, yeah. you'd be great for our CIA. Yeah, you know what? It's like, um, it's like I say the Mother Angelica is kind of like that. Or if you're involved in the new evangelization, uh, you're, you're just living an innocent life. And then one day you get a tap on the shoulder and it's like the Holy Spirit says, hey, you got a minute? <laughs> And then instead of a, a nudge, it's almost like a push, and you go, "Okay, okay, I get it, Lord." I, you know, but Terry, Terry, I just we Terry Modica has written a book. I was lucky to get to write one of the endorsements up for her newest book, "The Father's Heart: Meet the Real Abba Father." 
10 spiritual exercises to heal the wounds of the heart. Uh, uh, and and um, But before we get into this book, I'd really like to just know, get to know you, Terry. You have a really interesting testimony. Can you share with us? I know you were raised Protestant, right? Yeah, my dad was a Protestant minister, mainstream denomination, and uh, and I grew up having more faith than my own father did. Hmm. That used to drive me crazy. And uh, it, it one of the things, one of my first questions as a child when I became old enough to really understand things was, okay, we're in Sunday school, we're reading all these stories and hearing the stories in the Bible, and these are wonderful stories and have miracles in them. And where are the miracles today? You know, and and my parents were like, oh, uh, yeah, well, we don't have that today. And I said, yeah, but we need them today as much as they did, you know, and like the book of Acts mm -hmm. is just mm -hmm. filled with that uh, for the early church. And my parents said that was just to get the church started. And, uh, and I wasn't satisfied with that answer. Uh, I so I went off. I mean, I figured God is supernatural. So, you know, I've got to find that somewhere. And at the time, the only thing I was aware of where I could seek out the supernatural was uh, in the occult. So mm. I actually, um, my parents gave me for my uh, for Christmas when I was 14, a Ouija board. That's, a, that's, so, and, that's so dangerous. Oh, my God. Gosh, wait, wait, yes. let, 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 before, let, let me ask you this. So, so for me, too, I know I know at that same age, I thought the same questions. Why aren't the, do those miracles or why aren't those miracles working today? But part of the supernatural you saw in the book of Acts and in Jesus ministry was demons being cast out. You know, yeah. well, <laughs> maybe the miracles aren't for today, but but there's demons around still and people and people disregarded demons. They just they just thought, oh, it was their way of talking about mental aberrations or something. Yeah. And so then they give you the most dangerous thing you can give a child, one of the most dangerous things you can give a child is an Ouija board. And so my sister and I, she's younger than me, we started playing it together and after a couple of times it started giving answers that we at our age couldn't have possibly have known and when we looked into it, asked my parents, is this true? They said, oh yeah, it's true and that just got me super fascinated and I just, I just delved into everything I could uh, that it was all the occult, um, you know, from seances, divination, you know, palm reading, everything except, I mean, I tried some witchcraft spells, everything except Satanism, because I didn't believe Satan was real. I didn't believe demons were real. That, you know, there was evil in the world, but it was all human made. And so therefore you feel safe. You know, it's got to be from God if it's, because there's nothing, no other source of the supernatural. Right. Yeah. And, yeah. And my friends, I had I had a wonderful Christian friend who gave me a book trying to to get me set straight, and I just didn't believe it because now I had grown up with a you know Jesus was my best friend as far as I could remember. Mm -hmm. But after playing with the Ouija board and getting into other things, um, my relationship with Jesus just faded away. I mean, demons can be very subtle about well, it. You, yeah, you know, demons, one of their biggest things is to say, I'm not here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. Do, no, there, there's no Satan. You know, yeah. uh, Satan isn't real. Demons aren't real. That's what that's one of their one of their biggest lies, although it seems more and more now they're coming out. You know, they're more obvious that, oh. that, that, than ever. Yeah. And yeah. so you got yourself painted into a bit of a corner or how did you how did you find your way out of that confusion? Um, I, the Lord actually brought into my life a seminarian, a Catholic seminarian. I was vacationing where he was vacationing, and we became pen pals. And at that time, I was 18 uh, or 17, and, um, and in that pen pal relationship, uh, we, we, you know, we just kept up. I got married, he got ordained. My husband was stationed at McDill Air Force Base in Tampa, Florida, and so this priest friend was um, was in Missouri, and he said, oh gosh, you guys are in Florida, I want to come there in January. And so we had him stay with us a week, and while he was with us, uh, he knew I was involved in the occult. I, we'd had some pen pal discussions on that, but he, he knew 
that I wasn't listening to the truth. So he just just accepted me where I was at. But while he was visiting, he said, okay, I want you to make sure that I have a mass to go celebrate as a priest, you know, here in Florida while I'm visiting. And I'm like, oh, no, you don't have to go to church every weekend. You don't have to do your priestly thing. And and he just insisted. So uh, so we made the arrangements. And as I took him to that church, he said, by the way, I know you're going to attend mass because I'm there. You're you can't receive communion. Okay, and I'm that, like, oh, let, let's take a break. That, that's such a powerful powerful statement uh but we got to take a hard break here we'll come back and hear more about this i think it's it's very profound it's very profound to understand why um you have to be in a certain place in order to receive the body blood soul and divinity of jesus christ in the eucharist we're talking with terry modica we're going to be getting digging deeper into her, her new book the father's heart meet the real abba father and it's uh it, it part of it talks about uh healing the father wound we'll be right back with more of the bear wasnick adventure Schoolofmanliness.com is a place for men of grit and grace to join together, to inspire, to encourage, and to challenge each other to grow in manly virtue. Members receive morning man meditations, a monthly curriculum that is rich with audio, video, and written content, and a trail guide to help you map out your new trajectory. Many of our members lead their sons through this same curriculum. Your membership gives you access to both the Man Cave, which is our non-Facebook type community, and the School of Manliness at schoolofmanliness.com. Become a member at schoolofmanliness.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link, or go to NotreDameFCU.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. You can gain traction in the virtues in my book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue. And you can be inspired by my personal testimony of heartache and triumph with my book, A Surfing Guide to the Soul, both newly published by Sophia and available at our web store, deepadventure.com and also on amazon.com. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. We're so stoked about my newest book, uh, 12 Rules for Manliness. Where have all the cowboys gone? Uh, it's been bumping in the top five. Well, I should say more, more often uh, in the top 10 for Christian books for men on Amazon. So it's getting a good, a good, uh, good attention. I can't think of a better book that a, a woman can buy for her husband or her, her, uh, the men in her life, her sons. Actually, any son that's in high school uh, or older would, would love this book. And all you do is tell them, you don't need to read the whole book. Just read the first chapter. And if you don't feel like reading anymore, you can put it down. So many men who don't seem to have the time uh, to read a book will read this whole book through in a weekend and then start over. It's just good man-to-man -man conversation, good, uh, in some ways, fatherly advice, uh, maybe the way an uncle would share with a young man. And it just talks about all, the, all these different areas of manliness. So it's, it's basically grit and grace for a man who wants to go deeper with the Lord. So I encourage you to go to uh, your local bookstore, your local Catholic bookstore, EWTN, Sophia Institute Press, or go to our website, schoolofmanliness.com, or go to Amazon. By the way, 
Amazon is the marketplace. It's, 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 it's kind of like our modern marketplace. Some people are really down on Amazon, but when you go to Amazon and you buy a, one of our books there, um, you can direct send it to your friends, but also it pushes up our, our algorithm so our book starts being promoted by Amazon, which has begun to happen. So anyway, 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? Uh, women, you should read it too. It really helps you understand men. Our guest right now is uh, Terry Modica, and we're talking a little bit about her. Well, we're talking about her conversion, then we're going to get into her new book, The Father's Heart, Meet the Real Abba Father. So, so you were um, invited to go to Mass, and here you are, Protestant. And, you, you know, like d during the COVID time, our Protestant brothers and sisters didn't understand why it was so important for Catholics to go to Mass. They said, well, you can go out and surf and pray or... You know, you can pray anywhere, but we can't. But it was they didn't understand that we wanted to receive the Eucharist. So, so tell us what happened when you, he said, "Oh, you," when you he, what was your response when he said, "Please come," but uh, you are not you're not allowed to receive the Eucharist. What was your response? Well, initially it was the typical Protestant or Protestant response. Uh, you know, it's like, well, if you came to my church, we wouldn't deny it to you. You know, communion to you. Why would you deny it to me? Why be so exclusive? So he started explaining it, and he was explaining that, and of course now at the time my mind only partially wrapped around this until he got to a key point. Uh, but first he was explaining about how when you receive the Eucharist, uh, you're, you're, you're declaring your unity or you've become unified with the, with not just Jesus in the Eucharist, but with the whole church what the church teaches, you know, the Pope's authority and all that. It's all part of the same thing. And so I'm like, I don't see how it's part of the same thing. But so he continued and he said, but, but this, unlike your communion in the Protestant church, this really becomes the body and blood of Jesus Christ himself. And he explained how it stays in the form of bread and wine, but the substance changes, uh, transubstantiation, you know, it's, it's, it really becomes Jesus. And I said, what? You're telling me there's a miracle that happens at Mass? Right, that there you go, a modern-day miracle, right? It's a modern-day miracle that happens on schedule every day of the year. You know, you go to Mass, you know, we can go to Mass every day. And it's a miracle that you can count on happens, even when the priest is in the middle of some horrendous sin, because it's not the priest who Amen. changes the right. form, you know, changes the substance. It's Jesus Himself. And so when this priest friend explained that to me, I just couldn't stay away from the Catholic Church after that. You just—that's just so well, you know, because you had a curiosity. It's very important for for parents to be aware of that because when their children are of a certain of age, you need to be ready. You need to bring them the answers to those kind of questions and and be watchful for them. You know, I remember in my own household, uh, my parents brought in a Ouija board for Christmas. It was like it was kind of a popular thing, and uh, and praise God that we you know we didn't get involved with it. We threw it away. But I remember one of my sisters wanted to have seances, so we just thought it was a fun thing to do. You're playing with fire. It's a very, very dangerous thing. So parents, when I talk about reefing the sails, um, be watchful. Uh, and so then you began your journey uh, to become a Catholic. Uh, and, uh, yes. yeah. and and my husband, he had been raised Catholic, but his parents had stopped taking the family to church. And when we were dating and falling in love, I said that I wasn't going to marry any man that didn't share my faith. So he started going to the, the Presbyterian church with me. And, uh, and then when I be, just awakened with this hunger to become Catholic, he just returned to the Catholic church with me. And he said, oh, this is like coming home. It does feel and, so right, doesn't it? Yeah. And we just, we just exploded in ministry. I mean, we just jumped right into evangelization ministry and, you know, got involved in the church together because we had just, he rediscovered, I discovered, you know, the, the, the wonderfulness of the church being our home. I mean, as, as uh, somebody coming from the Protestant background, I, I still had a lot of misconceptions, but I studied 
I, I you know, I, I went to talks, I went to seminars, I, I, I read books. On read the cat. Read, read. Was the cat? Was the new catechism out then? No, this was before then. When right. the new catechism came out, I was actually adult education coordinator, and I gave some courses on it in my parish and a few other parishes. It's a beautiful uh, book. Every Catholic should yeah. read. I think every Catholic should read one page of that the catechism every day because it is chewy. You you know, it's not something to it's uh, it and and it actually says there to read it as lectio divina to meditate on it. But yeah, but, mm-hmm. so I, yeah, I I uh, I. I give workshops sometimes in uh, the catechism by um, my method is is to teach people to you know I'll give them a topic and I'll say go look up that topic through the table of contents the index whichever you want and um, and so read the paragraph on that and there's footnotes read the footnotes the footnotes footnotes. are amazing the footnotes are amazing yeah and they often lead to other paragraphs so I said Follow the trail, and so then come back next week, and we'll you know we'll share what we discovered. And everybody has gone off on a different trail because there's so much richness in the catechism. You're right, and you know what it is? It's like I think of it as, as mining for gold. I have a friend here who has a gold mine actually, and uh, you're mining for gold. You're mining for gold, and you feel it, see that little speck, and you go, "What is that?" Then you chisel a little bit more. You go, oh, there's a little vein here, just a little vein here. And you chisel it and chisel. Oh, wait a minute, the vein's getting thicker. And then yeah. all of a sudden, you find yourself going up a, a whole up to the mother load, you know. And so, that's what it's like. And reading the catechism, the footnotes. What makes them so spectacular is the footnotes come from uh, writings of saints. They come from other church council, the earlier church councils. They come from the early church fathers. They come from scripture. Um, and uh, of course, philosophy. So, so it's very, it's very, catechism is very rich. But now, <clears throat> we've said all that to say this, <clears throat> Terry. We've just got a few moments to get started. So we're going to talk about your new book, The Father's Heart: Meet the Real Abba Father, and then we'll dig into it more. But why did you write this book? Well, when I became Catholic, I got a spiritual director, and one of the first things that she uncovered was that. Uh, while I knew Jesus and through the Catholic Church I met the Holy Spirit I was having a real hard time getting to know God the Father and so uh, she had me go through an experience with Jesus introducing me to God the Father and and, uh, we uh, just started to take a look at where my misconceptions about God the Father were coming from and uh, and they all come from, for everybody, they come from the impressions we get about fatherhood from other humans. We project onto God the way humans have been. And so somebody who has been abused automatically, unconsciously automatically thinks that God the Father might abuse them, for example. And even the best of, of human fathers are not perfect. And so we get these imperfect imperfect ideas about what God the Father is like. And so I just started a journey, a lifetime journey of getting to know God the Father as he really is. And in doing my ministry, Ralph and I founded, my husband Ralph and I founded Good News Ministries of GNM.org back in 1995. And It's just exploded, it's grown to people all around the world. And I I often, when people write to me with questions, I can see that they have a problem with really understanding how much God the Father cares about them, accepts them, uh, affirms them, you know, and and that sort of thing. And so I just just realized I needed to put it into a book. We're talking with Terry Mudika. Her new book is The Father's Heart, Meet the Real Abba Father. We're going to dig deeper into that when we get back from the Bear, for more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. Announcing Spirit Adventure TV with Bear and Cindy. So many people, especially you mama bears, tell us we want more of Bear and Cindy together. Well, we're happy to announce our website, spiritofadventuretv.com, as well as our YouTube channel, Bear Wozniak Spirit of Adventure, where you can watch Spirit of Adventure TV with Bear and Cindy. Join us where we live in the Hawaiian Islands or where we sail our boat, the Spirit of Adventure, in the Caribbean. 
experience both adventure and serenity with us as we share our life together, as well as the joy and the wisdom of our faith. Go to spiritofadventuretv.com to find out more and subscribe on YouTube to Bear Wozniak Spirit of Adventure. And join us, Spirit of Adventure, with Bear and Cindy. Here is a YouTube video short, which is based on an excerpt from my newest book, 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? Buy 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? at schoolofmanliness.com or wherever books are sold. Mama Bears, get these books into the hands of your men. Go to schoolofmanliness.com and subscribe to our weekly email to receive video YouTube links of the Bear Wozniak radio show, as well as the Spirit of Adventure with Bear and Cindy TV show, which, by the way, is filmed in the tropics, as well as our manly evangelistic YouTube shorts. Go to schoolofmanliness.com. Be the kind of man that when he gets out of bed in the morning, the devil says, oh no, he's up. Go to deepadventure.com and invite Bear to speak. Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We want to invite everybody to go to our website, schoolofmanliness.com. It's a place where men can join the man cave. It's our, it's our own non-Facebook community. In fact, uh, we have meeting, we have Zoom meetups about once a month where all the men get together. We share our, our, our encouragement, our challenges, and even some of our hold my beer type mo moments in our own kind of non-Facebook community. <clears throat> but it, it functions pretty much like Facebook. And then we have a monthly curriculum for men to go through. We all go through it together uh, with uh, uh, um, a video, audio, written content, self-assessments uh, from a lot of different authors and speakers. And so it's a great thing for men to go through uh, as they're so, because so many men have, a, have not been modeled, have not had a good model in their life of what a father is or what a man is. So, it, so we, we are kind of like uh, the cave of Adullam, all the misfits, uh, that were running from the law, or I like they say, running from their mother-in-law, maybe, or people owed money. They all went to this cave of Adullam with King David, and they formed each other, and the Holy Spirit formed them into the mighty men of valor. So please go to schoolofmanliness.com and check it out. Become a member of the Man Cave. And everyone can go there if they want to subscribe to our weekly newsletter. And women, we've got a special thing happening. Cindy and I are filming a new YouTube series, uh, Spirit of Adventure with Baron Cindy. Uh, it's for men and women because when we were when we were showing our last episode, our last season of Long Ride Home, our motorcycle TV show, <clears throat> it was filmed not all over the mainland but here in Hawaii. So a lot more of Cindy showed up, and people kept saying, "We want more Cindy." So when we're sailing our boat uh, in the Caribbean or we're out here in Hawaii living our, our our life of adventure, we're filming what we're doing, and we're going to be uh, sh sharing with you challenges, uh, inspirations, and and uh, and uh, and just our adventure in the Lord. So. Uh, Go to schoolofmanliness.com, and you'll see there's a place for the women there, too, the mama bears as well, so they can follow us, because pretty soon we're going to be having something special for you. Well, it's actually for the whole family. For men, men, men love it, too. We're talking with Terry Modica, uh, her new book, The Father's Heart, Meet the Real Abba Father. Terry, you know, <coughs> I have a challenge. My, my father, who eventually became a beautiful Christian man, uh, he was Catholic, but he was very stern, uh, very aloof, kind of not, not there in my life at all. Uh, uh, and uh, and so I had a real problem c when I ever hear the Our Father right there. I it, the ball drops for me, uh, even though my father o over over time became just the most incredible uh, encourager to me and teacher to me and everything. I, when I was later on in my adult life, there is still this kind of f fear of uh oh, father, you know. And so I'll tell you, I, I, I went through a medical situation recently, I had to rehab, and so I would spend about an hour every day go, swimming out into the ocean where the waves are and just treading water. And I would want to pray, um, I would want to pray, but in Hawaii, the name for father is Makua. So it was hard for me to say uh, father, but I would say, Ame, I would say Ake Makua. Like, Ake Makua. 
in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But I prayed to Makua because it just got me past that, that mental roadblock. And, but in time, though, I, I would say dramatically over time, the harshness that I think of when I think of the Father, it's still there. But it's become uh, it's become large. It's a, I, I realize that it's a it's a there type thing, and that um, God's healing me. So, is there anyone that you've ever met that has not experienced having a father that wasn't perfect? Is there anyone you've ever <laughs> met that doesn't have a father wound? Uh, no, just Jesus. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And and, uh, and the thing is, a lot of people don't realize it's father wounds that are interfering with their relationship with God. Uh, but uh, and and in in researching my book, by the way, there's there's these are ten spiritual exercises as if you know we were meeting together. But you read through the the chapter, and I give you spiritual exercises. It's a workbook where you can write in uh, to help you through the healing process. And th- these are ten spiritual exercises, but there's actually a total of thirty. And so that we're going to have another book coming out uh, to discover more about who God the Father is. And then the third book, the last set of spiritual exercises, really goes more into the, uh, the world and how we can help bring God the Father back to the world and how St. Joseph is a, a good uh, model for us and and how to rely on Saint Joseph as a model uh, for fatherhood wonderful and so that will be coming out later this year well describe what the father how, how, how the father what is the father the father wound what is that how does that I de- t- and how do we heal that just well let me let me in give ten an words or less ten words or less oh instead of a story okay <laughs> no no we want to hear the story go ahead share, share with us yeah the story or the ten uh, words? Or no, the, the, share the full story. <laughs> I was messing with you. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, right. Ten words or less. Sure. Um, okay. So uh, my father was not abusive. My father, you know, my human father, he was, uh, you know, he, he was not a faith-building father. He was also very cold. Uh, if he ever hugged me, it was a very stiff, uncomfortable hug. Uh, it's like he had never learned how to hug. And as a matter of fact, when I got married, I married an Italian, and he was <laughs> And so we'd, we'd hang out with our friends, and, you know, we'd hug our friends upon greeting and upon leaving. And, and uh, somebody had the guts to tell me one time, Terry, you don't hug as good as Ralph does. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so I went to Ralph and I said, "Teach me how to hug." And my husband did a lot to help mm. me learn, as through his own fatherhood of our children, and through discussions we had about fatherhood. And he had a far from perfect father himself, but you know, as a man who was centered on Christ and who was determined to be as good a father as he could be. Uh, you know, he, I learned a lot from him, and that's what we need to do: is we need to find role models that uh, we can learn from, uh, role models that uh, we people we could even ask, "How do you do that? How do you hug like that? You know, or how do you handle your kids that way? Or how do you see God the Father?" And you know, God the Father is the one who uh, who holds us when we're crying. God the Father is the one who is is there for us. You know, we tend to think of him because our if we had a human dad at home, he was usually the disciplinarian more cuz men are designed by God to be strong, to be warriors and and when that comes across in parenting, you know, it just even when it's good parenting, we still end up projecting onto God the Father that he's a warrior and I'm the enemy, you know, because we've been scolded when we were kids, rightfully so, you know, we did bad things and we got punished for it. And so we expect God the Father to punish us. And we don't make the connection. And that's one of the things I do with my with my spiritual exercises in my books is make the connection to Jesus taking the punishment for us. And when God the Father looks at us, He's looking at us through the cross, 
and he sees us as the as the the, the beautiful son or daughter that he created us to be. And he loved and, us. So, he loved us so much that he sent his son, which is a exactly. as hard as it was for Jesus to say yes. I, I wonder how hard it was for the father, the pain that the father oh. felt. Um, <clears throat> to see Jesus when he took on our humanity that meant he took on our sin too you know um, <clears throat> I remember um, riding my bicycle in my book uh, a surfer's guide to the soul uh, a surfing guide to the soul uh, I talk about when I was pedaling my bicycle from San Diego California to Jacksonville Florida and um, I was pedaling it was it was rec record-breaking heat eight days of record-breaking heat so I would have to pedal at night because <clears throat> the pavement would stick to the tires of my bicycle. And so I was pedaling, you know, a side road, kind of, kind of going along the freeway, going in through Arizona towards the beginning of my bicycle ride, which, by the way, was really just a prayer. And um, I, the moon was full. It was almost like day, full daylight out there. And I found myself at one point just kind of breaking down and saying these really unusual words. I prayed to God the Father, and I said to him, I forgive you. And what it was, it wasn't that um, God had ever wronged me in any way, but I was kind of <clears throat> holding a grudge. It was like, I've been through a heck of a lot here, God, you know, and why didn't you do something about it, sort of a thing. So I was holding a grudge against God, and when I finally said to God the Father, I forgive you for all that I've been, up th been through at, up to this point in my life, I forgive you because um, it was like I was holding a grudge. And it was really a breakthrough for, for me. It, 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 you know, there was tears. It was really a breakthrough for me while I was pedaling my bicycle at about midnight on a full new moon night to say, to know uh, uh, that God loved me. And so, uh, so there, but some people I think hold this kind of like there's, it's not, it's something in us. That needs to say, God, I forgive you. I know you're for me. You're not against me. I love you. And all, everything works together for the good for those who are called by your name. We're talking with Terry Modica. She's the author of a series of books. Uh, the, this book, The Father's Heart, Meet the Real Abba Father, is her first book on healing the wounds uh, that we have, uh, especially the father wounds. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. People love our EWTN TV show, Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak. Thanks to you, the show has won four different tally awards. And now, instead of waiting each week for the next episode to air, you can actually binge watch our show and even share it with your friends when you go to deepadventure.com and join the Mama Bears or the Man Cave. Along with all the other benefits, you get total access to all the seasons of our aired episodes, plus instant access to episodes that won't even air for several months. Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak, a great way to communicate the gospel in a gritty enough way that even tough men will stop and watch at deepadventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link, or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. Here is a YouTube video short which is based on an excerpt from my newest book, 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? Being a father is about the greatest adventure that any man can ever have. A father is a bucket of grit, fortitude, know-how, and worry, mingled with hopeful determination that he will give his children the best home possible and the best possible start in life to pursue a rich, beautiful, well-lived life. And also, this is a life he knows that will go on forever. As he shoulders the responsibilities to care for his bride and their children, with all the hopes and worries that go along with that, he goes from not even knowing how to hold a baby to holding the whole future of a child in his hands. He grows into his fatherhood and into his manhood as he accepts that responsibility and lays down his life in love.
still listening? I thought we warned you to change to an easy listening station. Well, you asked for it. Here is more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I want to invite you to go to our YouTube channel, Bear Wozniak Spirit of Adventure, where you're going to find all kinds of things there. We have just we have about 1500 videos up on that site uh, so there's so much to get all of the this show that we have today with terry modica uh the video version of that show is up uh our long ride home tv series is up there uh just so many things so we invite you to go there and become subscribers my sons shane and joshua Wozniak, are busy doing these beautiful 60 second shorts which are great for you but they're also great for you to share with your friends it's a great way to open up for you to do your own evangelization with them <clears throat> terry modica we're talking about the father's heart um, and talking about um, uh, the, the need to heal the father wound. I remember when I was on my way to receiving Christ. To, I mean, I was, I was raised Catholic, but I was on my way to, I was seeking a personal relationship with him. I always thought of God the Father as being a father that sent child support checks. Like I could see that he was sending the rain and he had made this beautiful creation for us. But he wasn't the type of father that would want me to sit up on his lap and he would hold me. Uh, tell, tell us what's on your heart. Tell, you, with, in this last segment, just tell us what's on your heart for people to hear that have this, this father wound. Yeah, you mentioned just before the break uh, that you, know, you had to forgive God the Father. Uh, everybody has some disappointments. Like I prayed and prayed and prayed and this didn't get answered. Or you know, or things didn't turn out the way I wanted them to. And, and it's, you know, even when we have a strong trust relationship with God, the Father, uh, because we've been on a journey or we've had a terrific human father and it was easy to transition into understanding God, the Father, uh, it, there's still things that if we pay attention to, will realize that we do need to say, God, I forgive you for whatever. Uh, we tend to not like to think that we need to do that. It's like, oh my gosh, I'm so bad that I would have to say that to God. <laughs> you know, he doesn't need forgiveness. He didn't do anything wrong. Right, but right. Yep. when we identify where we have hurts, where we have wounds, part of the healing process is to say, I mean, even if you have to couch it with, God, I know you didn't intend it this way, but I interpreted that you were abandoning me or mm. ignoring me or mm. whatever. And, and, you know, and I forgive you for that. Oh my gosh, it, it's part of the healing process that you can't do without really. Mm. But the first part is to identify, and that's what my books do and my, my spiritual exercises, mm. is to identify where your particular wounds come from. Mm. And, and, you know, it's when I first met God the Father as he really is, my spiritual director had Jesus, had, you know, I visualized Jesus taking me to God the Father and pushing me up onto the Father's lap. Really? And Yeah. And mm. I just stayed there, cuddled in his arms, imagining what it felt like, you know, God the Father was big, but... He did not make me feel inferior and I could feel his robes against my ear and you know and it was and I just stayed there in that for as long as I wanted to and it's a place I go back to if I mm -hmm. you know when I need to and and it it is it is something that God wants for everybody God the Father is like the parent who is longing for the kids to come and the kids are so busy with their lives or they're you're so busy with their the way the world has captured them and and I mean because the world today has just I mean over the past few decades has just uh, ruined the image of fatherhood mm -hmm. you know God's design for fatherhood so mm -hmm. much that mm -hmm. it just confuses the matter so much more as to who God the Father really is you know, it's hard to tell somebody, evangelize somebody to to get to know, you know, God as a whole, not just Jesus as our Savior, but God as a whole, you know, if they did not grow up with a father at home or the father was abusive or, you know, or cold like mine was. I mean, my father did not understand me, did not really listen to me. 
and and so I thought for sure God wasn't listening to me whenever whenever uh, my prayers weren't answered. But I knew that I finally reached a, a certain level of healing a couple of years ago when I was sick in bed for a couple of months. Mm. I was bedridden from uh, from I was hospitalized a couple of times and and bedridden, and uh, it. I I was just like, Lord, you know, you could, at the snap of your finger, heal me and get me out of this bed. And he didn't. But it was the first time I didn't think, well, maybe he's abandoned me. Oh, no, of course he hadn't. And then go through that whole process. Instead, it was like, no, I'm just lying on his lap. And for whatever reason he wants me here, I'm here and I'm not going to question it. I'm just I'm all right lying on his lap. Mm -hmm. And that was so freeing to just, you know, even even in my suffering, to feel his closeness, to feel his love. And it made the illness a lot easier to get through uh, mentally and spiritually because of of that, you know, yes, the Father does love me. There's a certain thing that's called, it's called rest. It's a spiritual rest. I remember once... It was gnarly. I had uh, three ch- children, I think, at the time, and one was about to be born. My youngest was about to be born. And suddenly, I was working for a New York bank who wanted me to move to New York, and I said, no. I'm not. I was in California, where I was raised. <clears throat> so suddenly, I found myself basically without a job. I had a 10-week uh, pay, you know. And at that point is when I started my CPA practice. But I remember when I was trying to figure out where, where, what I was going to do, um, it was really hard to find jobs in those days. You know, you had to have a recruiter and all that. I went down to the beach, and in a six-week period, I read the entire New Testament, the Old Testament, and the New Testament again. So in a six-week period, I just let the Bible go, sift me. And there's two things. There's two things that, that came out of that t- season for me. One was, my people don't listen. And the other one was just, the promise of the land of rest. And I came to think about what is rest? Well, rest, if you take the R-E from rest and you use it to say, recognize that God's God and you're not. And he's a God of love. Recognize who God is. He's a God that has a perfect plan for my life. And then you take the S-T from trust, the last two letters of trust, you get the word rest. And so it's really a a picture of resting in God's will. Now, as a surfer, I can't go surf a wave without a wave. I can't surf without a wave. Uh, And I have to paddle hard to catch one, especially a bigger one. But once I'm in the wave, there's sort of a resting. You're flowing with the wave, but you're going with, you're you're, you're actually have, have abandoned yourself to that wave. And so in some ways, it's, there's nothing more peaceful than being inside of a barrel. You know, you're just you're just locked in. Time is standing still. So um, there is this feeling that we we need to strive. The Bible says, "Strive, strive, strive." What? Strive to enter into God's rest. Like one, two, three, rest. One, two, three, rest. You know, but that that is that picture of resting in God's love, which is actually the same thing as to say to rest in in God's will, because God is love, and everything about His will. Is love in our willing our best for us, willing the true good for us, and those He's called us to serve. Can you give us about a minute and a half before we have to wrap up or whatever's on your heart? We're talking to Terry Modica, her new book, The Father's Heart: Meet the Real Abba Father. Yeah, I just, I just really would love nothing more than, than to convey to help people realize just how precious you are to the Lord. To God the Father, yes, to Jesus, he died for you, yes, to the Holy Spirit, he's there to comfort you, teach you, guide you, help you be holy, but God the Father, I mean, he's the one who parents you, but not in a way that we understand parenting, mm. it's, a, it's a parenting that is perfect, it's a parenting mm. that is love itself, I mean, love isn't love, unless it's loving Mm -hmm. and it's you know god is in god unless he's loving because Mm -hmm. god is love Mm -hmm. and to just enter into as you said the rest of that love 
to actually, I mean, tr trust God, but to the point where you can actually be resting. Yeah. And, yeah. and you know, I had to be forced into resting. I'm a very busy type A personality, you know, and it was, you know, I don't think God gave me the disease I had, but but he decided this is a good time to teach Terry something. He, were, he we uses and, all things together. He works them to our good. Yes, yes. Um, and yeah. it's just so wonderful to be just resting in the trust-filled love. Amen. And it, and God does bring discipline to to our lives, but he, but there's a scripture verse that says the wounds of a friend heal. When the Lord brings discipline in our lives, it's all, it's surgical. It's meant for healing. It's not to it's not to wound us. We've been talking with Terry Modica, her newest book, The Father's Heart: Meet the Real Abba Father. I was happy to get to write one of the endorsements for your book. That was really an honor. Uh, where can they find you, Terry? Okay, the my ministry's website is uh, GNM, which stands for Good News Ministries, and there's a lot of Good News Ministries is out there, including Protestant ones. So, if, but it's GNM dot mm -hmm. org. And you can find my books on there. I have other books as well on other topics. And uh, I write, I publish daily reflections on the readings from Beautiful. Mass. They're applied wow. uh, to your daily life. You wow. know, it, it ties the scriptures of Mass to your daily struggles, okay, including we... with God the Father. Sorry, we're running out of time. There's always leftovers when you're at one of God's feasts, though. This has been the Bear Wasik Venture, our guest Terry Modica. Until next week, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha! Thanks for listening to the Bear Wasik Adventure. Find more manly conversation at the Bear Wasik Deep Adventure YouTube channel. Subscribe and ring the bell. Ooh.